Is LeVar hurting their chances of getting Anthony Davis when he when he goes off like this? Before I even answer that question, Luke Walton, the losing attitude, when he took the Lakers job, which was obviously a rebuild, he was the winningest coach in the history of basketball. His, his head coaching experience was taking over the Warriors during that 73-win season and having a better winning percentage than Steve Kerr at that year. <laughs> what is LeVar talking about? Look. He is hurting the Lakers' chances of landing AD. Not in some huge way, but maybe in an important way. We all acknowledge, I hope, that the reason the Lakers haven't already landed AD, really, is because the package can't be overwhelming enough because when the Lakers have drafted at the top of the draft, number two overall, three years out of, like, four, it was D'Angelo Russell, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, right? They haven't done a good enough job at identifying and developing blue chip talent. I mean, that's the bottom line. So the weight on their side is not equal to Anthony Davis, right? The, the, the commodities, the assets they have to trade are not valued heavily enough to, to balance the scales with Anthony Davis. They need all the help they can get with their trade assets. Any, I mean, if it's close, and I don't know that it is, but if it's close, they need every little bit to help balance the scales. And this, even though it's not a major imbalance, it takes it the other way. They can't afford to go the other way on this thing. And th there's just no way around it. Any team that's acquiring Lonzo knows they're also acquiring LeVar, and who wants to put up with it? That's really what this comes down to. If I'm Magic Johnson, I'm on the phone today and I'm trying to get Lonzo Ball to another team by tomorrow. I would trade Lonzo Ball immediately. And I'm sad to have to say that because Lonzo Ball is a nice kid with a good upside. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and I'm not denigrating LeVar Ball. It's not like he's been talking every day. He, we hadn't heard from him. He was him. quiet for a and while. We hadn't heard from him in months. But... When he says what he says, what? You think he's never spoken to his son? You think his son hasn't mentioned a word to his father who's a, who, who considers himself a basketball genius, who's a basketball coach? You think he hasn't said anything to Luke Walton? You think there are people in that locker room who don't believe this is a father-son conversation going public in some capacity? Certainly Lonzo Ball didn't intend for that to be the, to be the case. But you think, I, and I'm not saying that, doesn't, that that's exactly what happens. I'm simply saying that clearly is the perception. But also, let's get to the bigger issue. Lonzo Ball ain't worth the trouble that LeVar Ball can cause. Lonzo Ball, in his year and a half in the National Basketball Association, is averaging 10 points. He's shooting 38% from the field. He's shooting 31% from three-point range. I'm not going to even get into the numbers because that's not my issue with him. My issue with him is his lack of aggression. I wish Lonzo had his daddy's attitude. I wish Lonzo would go on the court and go for it. I wish Lonzo would push the envelope and show some level of aggression and assertiveness as opposed to being a number two overall pick that you passed up on Jason Tatum, De'Aaron Fox, Dennis Smith Jr., Donovan Mitchell, etc. that you passed up on all of those guys for. I wish Lonzo would be the guy that was assertive, that wasn't content to dribble the ball at half court and then hand it off to somebody and go hide in the corner because that's how he looks out there half the time. I'm not even getting into his skills. I'm questioning his level of assertiveness. He doesn't seem to appreciate the fact that you in Tinseltown. It's L.A. It's La La. It's the bright lights. It's what you said, Max, about Dr. Jerry Buss and what he wanted and what he envisioned when he drafted Magic Johnson. And then Magic Johnson is the president of basketball operations and gets somebody that's so passive that if we discovered for some reason that Lonzo Ball was a recluse, we wouldn't be surprised. Because that's the kind of personality he gives off. You don't need that in L.A., particularly when you have a daddy calling out the coach, calling him a loser. You can't have stuff like that going on within the Lakers organization. And that's what's going on right now. I would definitely move beyond this. Yes, LeVar is hurting to some degree, but, but just as much as Alonzo's inassertive play is hurting them. Honest the play. Well, blow me away. I mean, the Lakers may not be blown away by the uh, trade proposal. The Pelicans not blown away by the Lakers trade proposal, but I'm blown away here. No, LeVar Ball is not 
hurting the Lakers' chances of landing AD. And I cannot believe that I am the one here today to defend LeVar Ball. I'm serious. I had no idea that it would go this way. I think, Max, you went down just the right analysis and landed at the wrong conclusion. Here's what I see. Everyone, first of all, is weighing in on this trade. Everybody is exerting their influence, from Rich Paul to Clutch Sports to LeBron James. Everybody. At this point, Lonzo Ball is being dangled out there. It's clear what his future is, and it's clear it's not in L.A. So I don't begrudge LeVar at all, at all for weighing in. I don't begrudge LeVar for trying to influence where his son lands. I don't mind him saying, this is better for my son, and that's worse for my son. He's just doing, at this point, what everyone else is doing. But does it actually hurt the Lakers? The Lakers have now pretty much offered the house everything, everything they can. Almost every player on the roster, every young asset, every contractual relief, and two first-round picks, and the Pelicans have said, eh, more. They have basically exhausted their resources with the Pelicans, and the Pelicans are not biting. So in comes LeVar Ball, and he says, we don't want to be in New Orleans. We want to be in Phoenix anyway. Now, what does that do? Max, you see it as lowering the value of Lonzo Ball. Stephen A., I think I hear you saying the same thing. And most of the time, I would agree with you. We don't want mommies and daddies and wives and girlfriends weighing in on business. I generally think that's not a good proposition. But again, we're dealing with an extreme circumstance here. We're dealing with a different situation. And what LeVar Ball has actually done here, guys, is brought in a third trade partner. He brought Phoenix to the table. Phoenix is reportedly interested. Phoenix can now help presumably sweeten the deal for New Orleans. Now, can they, can they actually? Is, is, is New Orleans going to be interested in Josh Jackson or Warren or Bridges? They could offer additional draft compensation. 